topic, we're going to do data generator right now. So I go back to search, and I go SQL data generator 3. So when it opens, it asks what database we want to generate data for. And since we've been in T-SQL 2012, we'll just stay there because we kind of know it now. And it creates a project, and that project looks like this. So what does Data Generator do? It does exactly what its name implies. It takes a bunch of empty tables, and it generates fake data in it so that you can write an application against a schema you just created. Imagine, you know, you're writing your app. The first thing you do is you create a bunch of tables, and now you want to go into, you know, Angular, Angular or um, ASP.NET MVC, and you want your grids to be full. Uh, you want, you know, to see data when you click edit, right? Um, you can type all that data by hand, but that's time consuming and maybe not that much fun. You're just trying to get a mock-up done real quick. Data generator is great for that use case. And it, there's a lot of power here. So, for instance, if I click on customers, this is all generated data. I didn't, I don't know if you can see this down here on your screens, but this is all generated data down here and all made up. And it, it looked at like company name and it picked a good company name and it looked at contact name and it picked contact names and contact title and address and city and zip code and country and was able to generate all the stuff necessary for that. So if we click here, you can see that I asked for a thousand records, but I could have easily asked for a hundred thousand records if that's what I really wanted. Um, in addition, as I click on like company name, it pulled, you know, just random letters out of this regex screen, right? And then it prepended it with Inc, Corp, Company, Group, whatever, right? So, not, or it, not random letters, but you get that it's using this lettering chunk to kind of make names that might make a little bit of sense. And it's doing it in random lengths also. Like maybe some of them have eight characters, some of them might have 30 characters in them, right? Um, and then for contact name, it looked at a list in a text file of first names and a list in a text file of last names, and it just um, concatenated them randomly. You can add to that list if you really want to. You can create your own list if you really like to, and you can do that for any field, right? This is this expression, this regular expression, is completely up to you. You can, you've got a lot of control over how you do this. Um, same with like contact title, it just picked one set from um, the first list elements and then it, another one from the second list and added them together. So, and then um, like you could look at postal code and it just picked in regex, you know, zero through nine, five characters randomly, right? So if you know regex, it's a little easier to use this tool, but if you don't know regex, you can just use regex studio to create the regex string that you're really looking for. Um, so look at what it can do in sales.orders, right? So in sales.orders, it generated 1,000 records, and order information is primarily date and quantity, right, um, and the destination address. So pay attention to these three dates here. Some of these dates don't make much sense to me. Like an order date of 1953 is irrelevant for my application. My warnings won't go off. My alerts won't go off. You know, I have some issues with the 1953 date. So what I can do is I can highlight order date, and I can say, no, no, no. My oldest order is like 2013, and my newest order is 2016, right? And now, all of a sudden, all these order dates look like they make sense to me. But look at the required dates. If I have an order date from 2013, I can't have a required date of 1981. So when I click required date, I can say the range needs to be offset from a column, order date. And it needs to be within like about seven days of the order. Maybe, maybe we could say, no, it's okay to be 14 days from the order. And when I do that, look how required date starts making more sense, like 1-3, to 110 and you know 714 to 723 1123 to 123 like this now is making sense to me but ship date still isn't making sense to me so I can click back on ship date and I can say no nope, that's an offset and it's an offset of 
required date, and it's like negative 3 to plus 3. And now when I do that, these required date, these ship dates, sometimes I'm early, sometimes I'm late. That should help me look at my coloring in my grids. It should help me see if my warnings are doing well. You know, it's starting to give me more valuable data for um, writing my application. What do you guys think of that? Anybody typing? Rob thinks it's cool. Good. Good, good, good. OK. All right, so if we go back to our agenda, we've, we've now can cross off SQL Data Generator. By the way, there's a lot more power in SQL Data Generator. You can create your own Python scripts to seed values into these columns to have really complicated rules and business logic. Um, I don't know how comfortable you guys are in Python, so I'm not showing that. But um, you can do a lot with this tool. It's pretty cool and pretty easy to use.